Okay, here we go now. Bill Mears, our producer of U.S. Supreme Court. Here is his summary a moment ago. The Supreme Court uh, will allow a lawsuit by abortion providers in the state of Texas to proceed over that state's six-week ban on abortions. Uh, but the court will also allow the law to continue to be enforced while the case continues in litigation. So it's not been decided ultimately. It is a split ruling that does not deal with the constitutionality of the Texas law. So the ultimate decision now on that law that was just passed this uh, September uh, has yet to be decided. A couple of people with us now, Dana, Jonathan Turley, Professor of Law at Georgetown with his analysis. And in a moment, we'll talk to Marjorie Dannenfelser as well. Professor, you're reading it quickly. What have you, <laughs> what have you determined in the past couple of minutes there, sir? Uh, well, it's a lengthy uh, opinion. Uh, it's fractured. Uh, but the key takeaway is that uh, the pro-choice uh, litigants did not get what they wanted, including the Biden administration, in getting this law enjoined. Uh, and many of us felt that it was curious that they were trying to get the same justices to basically vote on the same issue just weeks after they turned down that type of injunction. Well, as some of us anticipated, they refused to do that. They, they said that this was improvidently granted, uh, meaning that uh, really this is not the relief that they're willing to give at this point. Now, what the pro-choice challengers do get is a green light to litigate this in the lower courts. And so they can proceed uh, to challenge this law. Uh, the court you know, broke a little China on both sides of the issue. But what is key here is that this will proceed uh, in the lower courts um, and all eyes will now remain on the Dobbs case, which is the Mississippi case that was just heard in oral argument. Uh, again, as many of us expected, that will be the case that will likely uh, reframe the issue of, re of reproductive rights. Uh, and so Texas goes back to Texas, but Mississippi obviously remains in the Supreme Court. I want to bring in Marjorie. Uh, we introduced you a moment ago, but I haven't had a chance to talk to you uh, since this all uh, has gone down like, in terms of the, the Supreme Court hearing, the Dobbs case, that's the Mississippi case. But now this, out, out of Texas. Um, so you represent Susan B. Anthony List. When your members ask you today what to make of all of this, what did the Supreme Court just say about the Texas law, how would you explain it? I would say it's good news. Um, while there is a pathway for uh, this to continue to be litigated in the lower courts, it's good news because the law will remain in effect, as it has uh, for quite some time, already saving thousands of lives, and we hope more uh, to come. And, uh, and it is certainly true that um, when all eyes remain on Dobbs, which will, we hope, make this a moot point, the reason that there is this curious enforcement mechanism is born of frustration out of years, decades, of not having any pro-life protection enforced uh, that had any degree of ambition in any state. So this that's the reason there's so much focus on Texas. If Dobbs, which asks only one question, is there any pre-viability limit, abortion limit constitutional? If there is any pre-viability limit that is declared constitutional, then this um, type of mechanism, this enforcement mechanism, will not be necessary. Just the traditional means of enforcement mm -hmm. would be relevant. I apologize for the interruption there. Just want, <laughs> Professor, back to Mears' conclusion. Both sides can claim, he writes, at least a partial victory in this ruling. And you mentioned Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi's at 15 weeks, that law. Texas is at six. Uh, Professor, mm -hmm. do you believe that absent the Mississippi judgment here, that um, it prevented the justices from ultimately ruling on the Texas law. Well, this was always a very tricky question because uh, they were bringing this injunction against officials that really don't have a, an official role in the enforcement of the law. And the Supreme Court had a, an oral uh, argument on this issue, whether they can enjoin. And the, some of the justices says, look, we enjoin people, not laws. You don't just come to us and name anybody that you can come up with. 
Uh, and so there was this really procedural question that was looming, and it clearly uh, still carried the day with the majority of the justices. But I also think that these justices believe that they've got an abortion case. It's called Dobbs. And that's going to clarify a lot of these questions. And so they're going to put Texas back on this slow track, and they're going to resolve Dobbs. And the question for Dobbs is not simply whether Roe will be reversed. A lot of people feel that's probably unlikely. But whether the court is going to dramatically change and reduce the reach of Roe, uh, and this goes to that pre-viability question, uh, Mississippi set an earlier date of about 15 weeks. That's around the time in, in, in you go back to some of the early laws that was called the quickening when a woman could feel the first movements of mm -hmm. a pregnancy. And the question is whether the court's going to latch on to that and say, you know what, we're going to do away with a lot of Roe and Casey. We're going to give states a lot more leeway, uh, but we're still going to guarantee abortion as a constitutional right. It's just that we're going to be enhancing the authority of states to legislate. Marjorie, I wanted to ask you one other question, um, and then we'll get back to other news. I as all of this is happening on the merits, right, the laws are being heard by the justices, there's this parallel conversation happening about the politics of it all. With Democrats and pro-choice uh, people saying that there will be a huge revolution in America if Roe v. Wade is overturned or if this Texas bill is allowed to go into effect. Is, do, you, do you think that that is a real possibility? Uh, I, I know that you don't necessarily care as much about the politics. You care about uh, the issue that you... Uh, is near and dear to your heart and to the, the heart of your members. What about that political question as we all sit and wait for the Supreme Court to rule? Well, certainly politics has led to this place because we had to have a Senate and a president that would nominate, a Senate that would confirm justices that would hear a case just like this that would test the viability question. In my opinion and the opinion of jurists that I speak with, um, every day that there's a high probability that Roe would be overturned because the to say yes to the question is any pre-viability limit constitutional is to eviscerate Roe versus Wade because of the viability test and to come up with some quickening or ancient other test mm -hmm. uh, is arbitrary, just as arbitrary as what's currently um, in, in uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, parlance. So yes, I think the politics of this is vitally important because right it, because if this happens, the question will be returned to the states to allow the democratic process to unfold. Each state has its consensus, and that consensus would be allowed to make its way into the law. And the, and the Congress, the same. Understood. So it's exactly how it should work and, wh and what has been prevented for 48 years and why we've had such polarization on this issue for so long. I just want to squeeze one more into Jonathan. Uh, th this came quickly on Texas. We expected it quickly. W when would you expect Mississippi to be ruled on? Well, that's going to take a while. We're going to go into next year. I think that it's going to be likely a fractured decision, and that can delay it even further. So we're talking months. Uh, in the meantime, Texas can proceed, although one court obviously has already ruled that that law is unconstitutional. But the court is going back to a single track, and that track originates in Mississippi, not Texas. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Be for that. Uh, thank you for the quick turnaround and the hustle. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>